soon. Amen. Let's all stand. 291, 291. Come and dine, the master calling. Come and dine. Jesus has the table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people come and die. With his hand, he would feed and supplies on every knee. Full to sweet supper, Jesus, for the time. Come and die, the master call and come and die. You may feast in Jesus' table. Thank you for that wonderful singing. You may be seated, and it's a joy to be in church. And it is a cold, cold day. I understand that, but it's warm in here, and uh, we're thankful for that. It reminds me, uh, this fellow had been out of church. Uh, he was a member, but he hadn't been coming. The pastor went down and said, well, I've been missing you. He said, well, this excuse and that excuse. He said, well, we really have been missing you. Well, there's been a lot of, a lot of rain, and uh, he said, well, I don't know what that has to do with anything. He said, but it's dry down at the church. He said, well, that's the other reason I haven't been there. It's been pretty dry, so. But uh, we are glad you're here. It's cold, but it's warm in here, and we're thankful that you are with us. If you're joining us via live stream, we've got a lot of folks that called in or texted or some way sent message that they would not be here in the service, but they're viewing it live stream, and thank you for doing that. Or maybe you're joining us uh, via live stream for the first time. We're thankful that you are here, or maybe listening on the radio. This is Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church right here in Gray, Tennessee, and it's broadcasting live on 96.3, and we're thankful that you are joining us. However, but if you're sitting here, thanks for making your way into the service today. It has been cold for sure. And uh, we've, we've been, some of the guys have been shoveling and, and spreading salt and getting things ready. And I know they've been doing the same thing at your house. I uh, had Amy out, we were out yesterday doing something and we we're pulling up. I was going to let her off at this uh, at this store, and um, and she she said, "Look at that!" And there was this big old guy, big big guy. But he had a you know, look newborn from where we were at, newborn baby, and didn't have a hat on. And she said, "Look at that! That kid, that that man doesn't have that baby." I thought she was going to jump out of the car and flog him. <laughs> I said, "Honey, back off, back off." And, and it wasn't just that I was worried about, I think she could have taken him, but he was about six foot four, 300 pounds. I wasn't sure. And it reminds me of, um, I, I told um, uh, somebody this morning, you know, was, I heard this guy went to the um, uh, police academy and he was in his training and they, one of his uh, professors said, well, if you pulled up in your, in your cruiser and your mother-in-law was being attacked by six vicious thugs down this dark alley, what would you do? He said, well, I guess I'd leave him alone. I'd say, surely six of them can take care of her. <laughs> so, 
Some of you didn't laugh because you're a mother-in-law. I understand. I, I know, I know that some of you are glaring at me, but uh, we are certainly glad that you're here today. Thank you for being in church. We're looking forward to a great time. I want to pray, and then we'll open up the service officially. You pray with me that God would uh, meet with us, and I do mean it with all my heart. I joke a lot, but I don't mean it. We want folks to be safe, and there's folks that just, it wasn't wise for them to come out, and if that gets to be you next time, then please stay home. We want people to be safe and be smart, and, uh, but if you can gather in, of course, we're always glad to have each and every one of you. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for the time to be in your house. I pray that you bless us now. Lord, we're looking forward to a good time. And I pray that if it, the only way that will be a good time is, Lord, if you would meet with us. And that's what we desire more than anything, dear Lord, that you would truly meet with us and bless us. Give us a great time in your house this morning. And Lord, as others are gathering, uh, watching it via live stream or listening, I just pray that you do a work in their hearts as well. And we will certainly, Lord, praise your name for what gets accomplished. And we'll thank you for it all. Amen. Well, if you're a guest here with us this morning, thank you for joining us especially. We want to welcome you to church today. And uh, the pew in front of you, there's a Connect card. If you take that card and drop it off at our guest services counter when you leave uh, today, we have a gift we want to give you just to thank you for being here in the service with us. We are so glad that you would come out on a cold morning like this and join with us. And just want to announce a couple things that we have coming up so that you know that you can take advantage of them. Uh, come back to the service tonight. We're going to have a great night in church, uh, as we always, uh, we always do and always try to. But tonight Tonight we're going to uh, have Stephen Carrier and his wife Leslie here uh, with us, and uh, they're going to be sharing some things in the service, and I think they're down in the Spanish ministry this morning. He taught our Sunday school class today, so it's good to see them, good to have them, and you get an update from them tonight. So come back in the service, and you get a chance to uh, spend some time with them and hear what God has been doing in their lives, and we're excited about that. And then, we've mentioned it many times, but our couples retreat is uh, just a little over a month away now, but the deadline to sign up is next Tuesday, uh, uh, January the 30th, so not just a couple days from now, but a week in a couple days. And so if you've been holding off, wondering if you're going to sign up or not, we don't wait any longer. Uh, get your get the, the form out there. There's a, uh, a flyer you can get and it'll show you, tell you how to sign up and uh, you can get your name on the list and we'll have a great time with that. And it'll be an exciting time uh, for you and your wife or your uh, as, you, as you go down there and spend some time together. And so guys, because I'm telling you to sign up because you need to take the lead in that. That's what I was trying to say there. So, uh, But then uh, we do want to uh, invite you to uh, let you know about it, I guess. Next Sunday night after the evening service, we will have a fellowship uh, as a farewell fellowship to Brother Dan and Miss Carmen, and uh, we are uh, so thankful for them, but so sad to see them go. And uh, so if you didn't catch the announcement on Wednesday night, uh, God is moving them. And uh, and so next Sunday night after the evening service, we'll have a fellowship to spend some time with them and, uh, and just want to invite you out to that. Make sure you come and uh, you see them off, and uh, we will look forward to that fellowship uh, and uh, we we'll be praying for them as they get ready to move and all that they have. So those are all of our announcements. Let's all stand together. Dan's going to come lead us in song 336, Amazing Grace.
Praise the Lord. What a wonderful song. It was a wonderful experience up here. Brother Dan leading and the choir singing from the back and the congregation singing from up here. It was a wonderful time singing that old song, Amazing Grace. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful thought. Well, we're glad to see uh, the ushers up here, a good-looking bunch. The youngest one of the bunch, no offense the rest, is Jude. Jude, how old are you today? How old? Anybody else younger than that up here? <laughs> Jude's 15 today. Today's his birthday. So uh, taking the offering on his birthday. I said, what would you do having your birthday on today? He said, well, where, where else would I want to be other than church? So praise the Lord and happy birthday. Lord, thank you for this time to gather together. Thank you for the chance to give, dear Lord. Bless the gift. I pray you bless the giver. Bless those that don't have to give, dear Lord. Thank you for the way that you take care of everything that goes on. Lord, we're so astounded by your goodness and how you've moved on the hearts of people to be faithful in gifts and tithes, offerings and missions and different things, dear Lord. It's just amazing to watch you work. I pray that you take it and honor it and bless it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Six. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Oh, so are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for the look at the Savior. And life more.
Amen to that. Thank you so much, Miss Becca. And um, as Brother Daniel mentioned about Brother Dan, and uh, we are so, um, I'm happy for the church down there, but uh, um, 
heartbroken as far as on our side. And so it's um, just a sadness there. But we trust the Lord in that. And then um, to beat all, um, I think Brother Daniel is getting too close to the special, spe special music today. We got one leaving and then Daniel's paying too much attention to the soloist. <laughs> so we've got problems all the way around. So uh, <laughs> the rest of you poor special music, you, no, Daniel didn't even pay attention to you, but he's all googly eyed over this one. So, um, but I guess he should be. Praise the Lord for that. Well, last week we started in our series, or not a series, but our emphasis about following Him for our year. I'd like to emphasize that following Him. You remember last year we looked at great and mighty things, and the Lord just seemed to pave the way through that. And then I trust that this year that we would be blessed to truly just put emphasis on following Him in your personal life, in your family, in this church, that we might follow in His steps. And we looked had a passage in Psalm 25. I'm going to go back there. We preached a couple of verses. I'm going to look at a couple of verses after that. So we're looking at Psalm 25, verses 6 and 7. While you find your place in Psalm 25, uh, I don't have a joke today, but I did hear this is a true story. And uh, I feel bad when the preacher says, listen, I'm not preaching now. I'm telling you the truth. So this is a true story. Um, this uh, lady was, uh, she was on a layover and she um, went to one of those overpriced kiosks, you know, at the airport and had got some stuff, got a newspaper and got a pack of cookies. And so she, there's only one place to sit. And so she sat down there as quick as she could and she started reading her, uh, uh, reading her newspaper and she could hear on the other side of her newspaper, though, there was a rustling. And she looked over the side of the newspaper and that, uh, that there's a really nice looking guy has sports coat sitting in the seat beside of her, right? Or in the, 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 there's a little table and then the seat and he was getting a cookie and taking it. And she said, I can't believe this, Yahoo. He said, I paid good money. She said, I paid for good money for those cookies. And, and then, but she said, I don't want to get mad. There's no other place to sit. She thought she was going to grab the pack and go. But she said, no, I can't go anywhere. So she just kept reading. Well, just a little bit longer, uh, a little bit later, she heard rustling again. And so she looked over, sure enough, reaching that pack of cookies and getting a cookie. She said, oh, my goodness. So she reached and got a couple herself. And so she just eating on the other side of that newspaper. And she thought, surely it was over. Well, happened one more time. And she was just fuming by this time. But she thought, I'm just going to keep my composure. I don't want to burst out at him. I don't want to cause a scene, get security, all that. She's oh, just, she just arguing all these things. So they're about the end of the cookie pack at this point. And to add insult to injury, there was one cookie left. And she was looking and he broke it in half and slid half to her and took the other half. She said, oh my goodness, I can't wait to get out of here. And so sure enough, her announcement was made for her flight. So she said, I'm good. And she just threw the paper down, leave it, and got her stuff, and got her bag and her and purse, and so she walked away, and as she was getting into her purse to get her ticket to give the counter, she had a paper ticket, was going to get the paper ticket to give the counter, she opened up her purse, there was her pack of cookies. <laughs> she was eating his all along. <laughs> so, good thing she didn't say anything, because she was the, steal, the cookie thief, not him, so. Well, Last week, you remember that in verse number five, we looked at leading God, asking God to lead me in thy truth. Teach me for thou art God for my salvation. On thee do I wait. Remember, O Lord, uh, or, or verse four, show me thy ways. Whereas it's mean to say, teach me thy paths. And then verse five, lead me in thy truth. For thou art God. The God of my salvation, on thee do I wait all the day. I want you to look at verse number 6 and 7, and I'd like to, if God would help me, I'd like to uh, put two aspects to the message this morning, and I want to look at a holy remembering and a holy forgetting. The holy forgetting, we'll have some points underneath there, but a holy remembering, and we'll look at that in verse number 6. So as we read 6 and 7, let's look together. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies, and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. But I want to preach for a little while from verse 6 and 7 about following him because I'm forgiven. A couple want to join a church, and they want to meet with the pastor to explain a few things to them. So they set up a, t a time, and they met with him in their office, in his office, I should say. And the lady spoke up and said, well, pastor, if you notice that I don't veer very far from him, there's a reason for that. 
And she went on to tell a very sad story how they'd been involved in a church, but she had become infatuated with somebody else that she served with. And she, with her husband sitting there, told the pastor what had happened, that uh, she had just lost all thoughts and, and ran off with this fellow that had served there in the church with her. And she said, I got to a place where almost like the prodigal son, I came to myself. This was just the initial running off together. And she said, as a prodigal son, I came to myself thinking, what am I doing? And so she evacuated and left his presence and just went and called. The only person she really she could think of to call was her husband. And so she called her husband and she said, I know you don't want to have anything to do with me. I know that I don't blame you and I know you don't have any forgiveness in your heart. I know that you uh, couldn't love me, but I just need advice. What should I do? I'm in this spot and told the place, the hotel that she was at and all these things. And he said this, well, there's two kids that desperately need a mother and there's a husband that still loves you. And he said, why don't you just let me come get you? And so he told, she told this pastor that when a forgiveness and a love like that is shown to somebody, you don't easily forget it. And I'm looking at you and I, and I'm looking at every believer, when you and I have been forgiven so much by the great God Almighty, how could we not follow in His steps? I'm going to pray and ask the Lord to bless us as we get into this this morning about following Him because I'm forgiven. Father, be with us now as our prayer. I ask you to meet with us and impress upon each of us what you'd have us to have. In Jesus' name, amen. As we look at this powerful forgiveness that's mentioned here in these couple of verses, we receive from God, this is why we follow him. As I mentioned, I want you to see it two parts. Number one, in verse number six, a holy, a holy remembering Remember, the Bible says, O Lord, thy mercies, he goes on to say, and thy loving kindness. J. Vernon McGee in a book they put out tells a story of a little girl that I guess as best as anything would describe what loving kindness is. She said it's like this. She was telling the groups in Sunday school. She said it's like this. When you ask your mom for a piece of bread or a, bu a, a roll with butter on it, she gets that. That's kindness. But she said if she puts jelly on it just because, that's loving kindness. <laughs> I don't think it's a very doctrinal explanation, but it does kind of give you a little bit of how good God is. The psalmist says, O oh Lord, remember thy tender mercies. And he talks about the goodness of God. And I used to hear people pray, say, O oh God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, the God that, that let the Israelites cross the Red Sea, God that did this, and God of the Old Testament, God of the New Covenant. And I used to think, what a waste. Why say those things? God knows who he is. But then I realized that it's not silly to say those things because it's not that we're remembering and making God remember. We're saying those things and reminding Him so that we don't forget. And so when we say the Lord to the Lord, you're the Lord that's been faithful all the way through. Yes, it's giving praise to Him. Yes, it's giving glory to Him because He is that God that brought the Israelites through. It is the, He is the one that brought... Um, that brought uh, David uh, uh, through with, uh, with, with uh, Goliath. He is the one that uh, brought Daniel through the lion's den. As one old preacher said, he's the one that got Gilligan off the island. But I don't think that's in there anywhere. <laughs> but as you tell him and you say, God, you are this. We are not telling him things he doesn't know. But we're praising him and reminding ourselves. And so as we look at this, this holy remembering, we see that the scripture says, Lord, Thy tender mercy, remember those things, and thy loving kindness. I think about tender, it's best described like a tender branch. After this cold spell gets off and, and, uh, some, uh, and warm weather comes on, there'll be people, they'll do some sprouting. And you say, what's that? That means when you go out in the fields and you cut these little sprouts, these little trees that have started growing up, you can just take, you don't even need an axe. You can just take a little sharp hoe and, and sprout. You can cut those out. Or you take the uh, little tender branches or tender trees out of a, a fence line or fence row and you'll clean those out and you'll go, you'll go be able to do that because they're tender. And God says here about himself and the psalmist says, about him. Remember thy tender mercies. Remember the tenderness of the Lord, how he forgave you. There was a poet, which I don't know any of his work, but Edgar Guest, 
Edgar guessed they lost their first child. And as he went to the old, old-timey old pharmacy, the pharmacist who knew who he was motioned for him to come back. And so he went past the counter and went back to a little office that the pharmacist had. He put his arms on his shoulders. He says, Edgar, I don't know how to say what I'm going to say, but I just want you to know I mean it with all my heart. All I can say is I'm sorry. And if there's anything you need at all, you come get me. What's mine is yours. Guest would tell that story to many people afterwards, and he said that Jim Potter, that was the pharmacist, said Jim Potter might have long ago forgotten what he told me that day, but I have never forgotten the tenderness of that moment when he said, I am here for you. And as the psalmist says, O oh Lord, in verse number 6, remember, please, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness. That's the God that you and I have the privilege of sitting here and worshiping today, that tender mercies, loving kindness, God. I see, first of all, this holy remembering. God, don't forget how tender and how loving kindness, how loving you are and how much kindness you have. But then I have to say in verse number 7 that not only do we see this holy remembering, but in verse number 7, remember not, I see a holy forgetting Remember not the sins, nor my transgressions. Now the bulk of the musing for this morning will go on this part of the passage, and it'll be this holy forgetting that we get the privilege of enjoying. But I want you to see, first of all, I usually put it in threes, and there'll be three right underneath here. First of all, I want you to see the time of forgetting. Look back in verse number seven, or verse number six, rather. Remember, God. Remember your loving kindness. Remember your tender mercies. Lord, forget not, don't forget those things. They're of old. Lord, remember. And then God puts in his perfect timing. He puts in after that. Now, God, please forget some things. God's never forgotten anything except what he has chosen to remember against us no more. The Bible says, if I'm my place, In Psalm 103, verse 12, it says, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. You go as far as you can east, and as soon as you find when it catches west and that never happens, then you'll find where God has put your sins. The Bible says another passage in the deepest sea in Hebrews chapter 8, the Bible says, And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. But I challenge you to think about this. The time of the forgetting is, God, after all that loving kindness, after all that tender mercy, Lord, I I want you to remember those things and praise your name that you forget these things. The time of forgetting because, my friend, you and I, if you're a believer in Christ, you will never stand before God and give answer for those sins as far as being cast into a devil's hell. You will never do that because the Bible says he forgave them. You are saved and you're taken care of. You'll never answer for those sins as far as your eternal destiny. You say, Pastor, what about the judgment seat of Christ? And that's a real thing. And every believer will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible says, and give an account, but you will never ever give an account as far as for your sins and the penalty and the punishment for those. Those were all taken on the back of Christ when he went to the cross. My friend, the wonderful time of forgetting is that God in his loving kindness has says that because of his mercy that he will never remember our sins against us. The time of the forgetting is such a wonderful thought to my heart. And as I was trying to study this week, I just was feeling so overwhelmed about the goodness of God and how that goodness and his remembering how good he is is only equaled in my mind by remembering how he's forgiven and forgotten my sins. But I want you to look further in verse number 7, not only the timing of that forgetting, but then I want you to see the test of this forgetting. It says, according to thy mercy. So, God, remember not those sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, according, in in reference to, thy mercy. Some of you are old enough to remember, I looked it up, in 1980, I was seven. So, in 1980, there was a, a crazy glue commercial 
fella put this crazy glue on a, on a platform on the top of his hard hat, and that hard hat, they stuck to this eye beam and he would just hang there dangling. Some of you old enough to remember that? Some of you saying, what? what? What's crazy glue? I don't even know that. I, um, so he, he would hang there. How safe was he? Well, as strong as crazy glue was is how safe he was. I didn't know if it was real. Back then, they might not have regulations like they do now. Maybe it didn't have to be legit, but I remember it, ve I remember it very vividly, that commercial, him hanging up there. How safe was he? Only as safe as crazy glue was good. The test was how good the product was, and the test of this forgiveness is how good God's mercy is. How good is His mercy? The Bible gives the answer because it says in Lamentations verse, chapter 3, it is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because His compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy mercy faithfulness. There's a reason why you are not consumed already. There's a reason why you can sit here and thank God. There's a reason why you can go to uh, sleep tonight and pillow your head on a pillow of, of peace as far as your eternal destiny, and that is because it's of the Lord's mercy. How sure can you be of the forgiveness of God? Only this far. Only as far as as the mercy of God goes. And the Bible says they're new every day. Amen. Just as sure as some of us thought we were running shy on it, just as sure as some of us thought we were giving God a run for the money, so to speak, God's mercies are new every day, like an eternal fountain that never shall run dry. And I see not only the timing of that forgiveness, that the, the, the forgetting rather, is that God forget not those things, but God please forget these things. And there's some of us in this room that we are battling over bad things in the past and we can't forget. But could I say it kindly? You're the only one battling with it because when you gave it to God, He forgave it. Now, you can let your guilty conscience and your regret ruin you, or you can take God at His word and says, He that cometh to me, or in 1 John 1, 9, He says that He'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that, my friend, was spoken to believers, not just those that were need to be saved. That was spoken to people already saved. It says, just confess it to Him. He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I see the test of forgiveness is only as good as the mercy of God is long. And my friend, you can look as far from here, go around the world three times, and you won't run to the end of forgiveness. As a matter of fact, don't stop at this world. Go to the universe that God's created. Go to another solar system and go to somewhere else. All of this that God has created, and you will not run to the end of it. The Bible says that they are new, and that is the test of our forgiveness. But I want you to look at the end of the verse and one more thing. Not only the timing and the test, but then the trust. The Bible says at the end of verse number 7, Remember thou me for thy goodness sake. As if the psalmist is saying, God, remember me because your goodness is being advertised to the whole world. For your goodness sake, because your goodness is on display. And Lord, please remember me. Forget, my, for, forget not your good things or your, your goodness and your tender mercy and your loving kindness. But God, forget those things uh, that I've done wrong and forget the sins of my youth. And uh, do that, Lord. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake. We can trust God's forgetting because His goodness won't allow Him to violate His promise to forgive us. You know, there's a few things God can't do. He can't lie. And there's a few things that even at the fair booth, sometimes we use those things. But there's a few things He can't do. And, but the only things He can't do are the ones that He's already limited Himself by His character or by His Word that He won't do. 
He won't remember your sins against you anymore. Is it because he's forgetful? Is there some sort of disease that's, that's, uh, that, that's making him forgetful? He only is limited by the things that he himself has limited him himself in. He won't break his word. And we see here that his goodness that's mentioned in verse number 7 won't let him violate his promise. Because do you understand that if God just slipped the crack open the door once and let one little act that you used to do back in and put it back on your account, that 99.9.999% of them got forgotten and forgiven and erased, but he let one creep back in and get back on your account? My friend, we'd be in a heap of trouble. Because in order to achieve, or in order to arrive in heaven, you have to be perfect. You say, Pastor, I'm not perfect. Yeah, you, you and me both. But we are seen as perfect because of what the work of Jesus Christ did, because of His tender mercies, because of the forgiveness He gave for His goodness sake, won't let any of His character be kicked out. So therefore, His Forgiveness stays because his goodness won't let his forgiveness have a chink in the armor. And so as we see these things, we understand that we are following him because of who he is and because I'm forgiven. As the old saying goes, I'm in like Flynn, whatever that means, meaning that I'm in because of who I'm with heard a little boy that asked this shop manager if he could get a job sweeping the sidewalk out in front of this little store. He says, well, why should I let you? He said, well, I'm a hard worker. He said, well, what else? Is there anything else? He said, well, yeah. He said, I'm very neat, clean. I'm a neat guy. He said, is there anything else? He said, yes, I'm fast. I'll do it quickly. He says, is there anything else? He says, yeah, my dad owns the building. <laughs> How many of you understand the last reason probably <laughs> over overrode all the other reasons? Well, my friends, I'm forgiven. My father owns all this world. He doesn't only own this building, this town, this state. The universe is his. As a matter of fact, not only does he have sole ownership of it, but he's the one that created it. And so the trust that we have of his forgetting is for his goodness sake. There's no holes in his character. Folks, we are blessed. Amen. If you're in this room this morning or watching via live stream, if you're listening or watching or here, and you're saved, I hope that the fireworks of God are going off in your soul to remind you how safe and how sound and how secure you are because of his goodness sake. And if you're watching or listening or here today and you don't have your salvation settled, my friend, wouldn't you want to trust and believe on a God like I just described that keeps His people so safe, so wrapped up? The Bible talks about us being in the hand of the Lord and then uh, his, uh, Jesus' hand being in the Father's hand. He's got us sewn up, secured, So if you're here and you're a believer today, I hope that you would trust and see the test, whatever the world throws at God's salvation that He's given to you. We can trust and believe and depend on the Lord's work. Not only did the Lord work what He did, but as I mentioned, we can trust that He'll never hold them against us ever again. Because you understand how legal things work now. A company binds themselves to do a certain thing for their employees or their co-laborers or fellow business or whatever. And that's as secure as another lawyer can come through and figure out how they can manipulate some things and get out of that contract. But God's contract, if you will, with us 
is coupled with his goodness and his character. So his goodness for his goodness sake won't allow his character to be defamed and it won't allow his promises to be broken or even pushed against. So if you're here this morning saved, may you just relish in what God has done in your life. And then if you're not saved this morning, you can trust a God that will take care of you. He can remember your sins no more if you would put your faith, your trust in Him. Because the Bible says that our sins must be paid for. You say, Pastor, you said that you won't go to hell, you won't, you'll go to heaven because your sins aren't going to take you there. That's true. But only because I put my faith in Jesus Christ. I believed on Him. I didn't, go, I, I didn't become a pastor to go to heaven. I didn't start going to church to go to heaven. I didn't start living a good life to go to heaven. You can do all of those things and still not. But what I did was I put my faith in Jesus Christ. And the Bible says he forgave me of all my sins, all my transgressions. And now, if you were to go say, God, what are you holding against John down there? God's not holding anything against me because all of my sins were forgiven by the perfect and complete work of Jesus Christ. And if you're here today and you're not saved, would you put your faith in Jesus Christ alone as your Savior? And if you're saved, I hope that you go out of this room walking two feet off the ground, reminding yourself how wonderful of God we serve the one that saved us and forgave us. Would you bow your heads together with me? Father, thank you for saving us. Lord, we follow you because we're forgiven. And I pray, dear Lord, that every believer in this room would re-determine, determine again that following of you because of their forgiven status. And Lord, if there's one or several that are not saved this morning, oh, I pray, dear Lord, that they would put their faith in you. I pray that you've made it abundantly clear in their heart right there where they sit that they're not good enough to go to heaven on their own. The only way they get their sins forgiven, the only way they would get to a place where they'll be remembered no more is to put their faith in Christ alone for full forgiveness, His salvation work. Lord, if there's somebody unsaved right now, I pray that you're making that abundantly clear, and I pray they put, reach out to Christ in faith and receive Him. Bless us, Father, I pray, and we'll certainly thank you for all that you do. If you're able to, would you stand together with me? And as you stand together, just a little bit of musing, just a little bit of thinking, are you saved? Do you know the Lord? And my friend, you ought to just feel, ooh, that special assurance. And if you're not saved this morning, you can have that confidence that Jesus Christ is yours and your sins are going to be remembered against you no more. Oh, my friend, if you're unsaved, would you be saved? And saved friend, let's rejoice. If you're here and you need to come forward as she begin, as she's playing, if you need somebody to deal with you, help you, show you from the Scriptures. Brother Daniel's right here in front of the pulpit that I preach from. He'd love to take a Bible and show you how you can be sure that heaven's your home. Is that you this morning, my friend? That forgiveness, that assurance, that confidence that I talked about, that could be yours because of what Christ wants to do in your life. You've been living with your sin all your life. Today's the day to let Christ save you. If you're here and you're not saved, please take care of that. And then if you're here and you're saved, I do mean it. I know you can't literally walk out of this room two feet off the ground. But I pray on the inside that you're just rejoicing about how good God is to you. Whatever your need is, as she plays just a few more moments, God spoke to your heart. I invite you to come.
Amen. Thank you. You may look this way. What a joy to be out here on this cold morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being in church. If you're joining us live stream, thank you for doing that. And I mean it with all of my heart. I, if, if not wise for folks to be out, I don't want them to be either. And uh, appreciate you joining us today. Tonight, a special night. And uh, Brother Stephen Carey will be with us. We're looking forward to that in a great way. He's over preaching Spanish. I think he taught Sunday school. He's going to preach and sing tonight. We're going to work him hard as we can while he's here. But uh, he, it's his fault. He only comes in just a little bit. So we got to get it out of him while he's here. But he's not the only carrier here. We're going to have Brother Scott. He's going to pray and dismiss us. And then as you're dismissed, I trust that the Lord just continues to work in your heart and blesses you. And I'll be back at the back. Amy may be back there as well. She's been in the nursery, but uh, that's why I had to quit a little early. It's five till, so I wanted to get out of here. Can't go over when your wife's in the nursery. She'll get on to you. I love you people, but I go home with her, so I really make sure I, I, I keep it, keep, I, I keep my, like the one fellow said, I'm not henpecked, but I'm housebroken. I know the rules pretty well around the house, so, um, but we get out of here five minutes early. So thank you for being in church tonight. I do invite you back if you're able to. Tonight will be a special time with Brother Steve and Miss Leslie. We'll have a good time together. Brother Scotty, would you pray and dismiss us? Our loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this good message that we heard this morning. Father, thank you for your love for us and for Calvary, Father, where you, you shed your blood for our sins, Father, to give us, those of us who've been born again, Father, to give us a permanent home in heaven, Lord. And we, a debt we'll never be able to repay, but Father, all we can do is just offer up a, a sacrifice of praise to you. But Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house this morning. Uh, uh, be with us as we go about our day. Bring us back safely tonight. Be honored and glorified through everything that we do, Father. And we pray and ask all these things now in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.